good welcome to everyone um, a special welcome to those of you who are brand new to way around we have a bunch of um, new people new trainers and we're going to go over some of the basics and also get into some um, more advanced things with way around this is the first of a three-part um, train the trainer series and we are recording these webinars for anyone who can't make it live so in a day or two after the webinar, we'll be able to send this out um, via email. You'll get a link to be able to watch it on YouTube or on our blog. Um, if, you're, if you're not a blind trainer, you're welcome to be here. There's great content for you as well. So with that, I'd like to introduce Corey Ballard, today's special guest. Corey is the Director of Assistive Technology with Vision Forward in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And Corey did a great demo video about Way Around. He also hosts the weekly Tech Talk demos for adults with vision loss and their families. And we had the pleasure of being on Corey's Tech Talk a few weeks ago, and we're delighted that Corey is going to be joining us today. So thanks, Corey, for being here. Thanks, guys. I appreciate the opportunity. Great. And I would like to start by um, giving a quick demo of Way Around in case you've never seen it um, or a refresher for those of you who have seen it. So first of all, what is Way Around? It is a database driven audio labeling system that works with both iOS and Android. So if you like to label things um, in your kitchen, closet, hobby items, um, things in your office, if you want to label something, Way Around can help you do it. There are two parts um, to the Way Around system. The first is the app for your mobile device. Again, it's good for iOS or for Android. And the second part, which we'll be going over more later, is our smart Way Tags. And these are tiny tags um, about the size of a postage stamp. They come as stickers, magnets, buttons, and clips. And they all work exactly the same, but you would choose a way tag depending on what you're wanting to label. So I have a couple of bags of coffee that I have tagged. And this is um, a weight clip that I've used on the coffee. And I am going to go ahead and share my screen with voiceover so that you all can um, get a sense of the app. And I tested this beforehand and hopefully it works exactly the same. Okay, so if you are um, logged on on your computer, you should be able to see my phone screen. Go ahead and chat if you can. And I'm gonna, I have voiceover turned on. I'm using an iPhone 7. Way around, web dialogue. Welcome to way around. So to start, I'll just scan through the home screen of the app so that you can get a sense of it. Way cloud connected, image, settings, button and banner scanner ready press the read button below then hold the top part of your phone on the way tag until you feel a double click read button create button and that's it it's a really simple interface if you have any low vision features on your phone um, reverse contrast um, larger font way around is going to work with all of those i'm using voiceover today so that you can also get the audio experience so I, like I said, I have two bags of coffee and I am going to read a way tag. I've already written information to these bags of coffee. And so now I'm trying to select the one I want. So I will double tap on the read button. Read button. Alert. Ready to scan. Ready to scan. So I have this ready to scan dialog. And now I'm going to touch the top skinny edge of my phone right to the way tag. Fit Fuel, Black Rifle Coffee Company. So this is the Fit Fuel blend and um, Black Rifle Coffee Company is a veteran owned company that I really like and they have lots of different blends. I've also put some additional information on this tag and I'll just swipe right so that you can hear the information I've added. Purchase date July 10th, 2020. Roast medium. Blend 25% Robusta, 75% Arabica. Description, let this medium roast fuel your inner athlete with a delicious combination of bold and smooth flavors and a malt finish. So that's the official description on their website. And I thought people might want to know that if you're really into coffee. Reorder, link. And so the last thing I added is a link so that if I want to reorder this specific brand, I can easily get there. You don't have to put this much information on. You can leave it with just the description, which is what you heard at the very beginning. 
But if it's a product that you really like and you want a lot of information about, um, Way Around can help you organize it and you get the information whenever you want it. So I have one other coffee that I've labeled and I'll go ahead and scan that one. Read button. Oh, ready to scan. Ready to, ready to scan. Vintage Roast Coffee, Black Rifle Coffee Company. So this is a different blend from the same company. Purchase date April 26, 2020. Was purchased a little bit earlier. Roast lighter side of medium. And it has all of the same things, the blend, the description, and a reorder link. But what I wanted to show you is um, you can easily edit the tags. Um, creating, reading, editing are all work very similarly. You're just going to touch your phone to the tag. And at the bottom, after I scan the tag, I have an edit button. Edit button. <coughs> Edit, edit way tag, heading level one. And so when I edit it, I can edit some or all of the information on the way tag. If I wanted to completely change everything, I could delete it out and I could do that. But on this tag, I had an old date and I've now ordered some new coffee. So I just want to update the date. So I'm going to swipe right until I get down to the date. Way cloud connected, description, head, vintage roast coffee, detail type, gro grocery item, dietary information. Certifications. Purchase date. APR 26, 2020. Pop-up button. So you heard some of the other um, predefined fields that we have. Dietary information. That's things like nut-free, sodium-free. If that's something that's important to you, we predefined those things so you can easily just select and add that. Um, but again, you don't have to. So the purchase date, the last time I bought this was April 26th, but I've just reordered. So I'm going to change this date to today's date. So I will double-click that field. Purchase date, APR 26, 2020, pop-up button, April, selected, picker item, adjustable, 4 of 12. So this is a calendar view, and I'm going to just swipe down to July. May, so June, July, selected. Then I'll go across to the date. 26, selected, picker item, adjustable, 26 of 31. And today is the 21st, so we'll change that. 25, so 24, 23, 22, 21, selected. And it's the same year, so now I can just hit done. Done. Button. Done. Edit way tag. Back to way around home. Button. Banner. Landmark. And now I don't need to change anything else because it's the exact same blend of coffee. Um, there's nothing else that I need to update. So I'll go down to the bottom and hit the right button. Right. Button. Oh, ready to scan. Ready to, ready to scan. And now I'm going to again touch my phone to the way tag. Way around. Success. Way tag written. Vintage Roast Coffee. Black Rifle Coffee Company. And I'll swipe right. Purchase date July 21st, 2020. So it's very easy to update the tags. Um, writing a tag works just like editing, but all of those fields would be blank, and you can fill in whichever fields you would like. Um, I'll, we do have some resources on our blog about the different detail types and how you can make the most of this information. If you're just getting started with Way Around, I'd encourage you to not worry about the detail types yet, but you can just go into um, the description and enter a description of the item. That's really the label. All of the other details are adding additional information that might be helpful. So, um, Corey, I'd love to just pause and see if you want to add anything. Um, you know, and, and we'll probably get into this as we talk a, a little bit more about Way Around, but two really, uh, at least one really quick thing here. One of the things I've always liked about Way Around is how simple it is to use. And like you just mentioned, you know, when you're getting started, rather than focusing on those detail types and all the different types of fields that come under each of those de detail types, just start with that description field. And remember when you scan your uh, Way tag, that description field is always what is automatically spoken. So that's always going to be your most uh, important information. All of that other information is there, but only if you need it. And if you're going to swipe, if you're using voiceover, otherwise, you know, put that pertinent information in that description. So when, as you're getting started, sometimes a lot of tags, you, all you need is that description. You don't need to have all the other information. Great, thank you. And I'm gonna go ahead and stop screen sharing um, and then we can talk a little bit more about how you use Way Around, Corey. Sounds good. 
Okay, so it looks like it's taking a moment and there we go. Um, so, you know, Corey, I'm curious, how did you first find out about Way Around and what piqued your interest? So I've been, you know, I have been blind myself for over 30 years. Um, so I'm always interested in tools that are, is going to make my life easier. And um, also being an assistive technology instructor, uh, obviously I have interest in technology. So any new technology <laughs> that comes out, uh, I love to, to dive into it both personally and professionally. Um, so, you know, there has there have been many identification solutions out uh, for many many years, and one of the things that I was a big fan when I heard about Way Around was the idea of using a smartphone. First of all, smartphones aren't for everybody, and as and as great as Way Around is, and as great as an iPhone or an Android device is. It's all. It's not always for everybody. So I, I like to always get that out first and foremost, uh, because, you know, I've worked with many clients where touch screens just weren't the best solution for them, and it's not. It's not you. If it doesn't work for you, it's not you. It's not your fault. It's just not the right device for you. But with way around, there is still some really cool opportunities, even if you're not a full touch screen user, because. The device, because the app is, is laid out so easily and, and can be used so easily, there is still opportunity for you to dive into way, to way around, even if you're not a kind of a full-fledged smartphone user. Uh, but myself, I've been an iPhone user since 2009, and so any new app that comes out, I'm always kind of interested in. in when way around was launched and 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 i saw the potential i was very interested in you know I, I i've always got my phone with me it's always in my pocket and so it's not another device i have to carry it's not another um identification device that's got to be with me it's ready in my pocket and that ability to quickly scan a tag and get that description i know i just said it before but for me that's always been one of the biggest strengths uh, of way around is that get the information you need quickly and have that other information there and, and access it as you need it. And so, um, you know, when I first kind of launched Way Around, like any new app, I, I, I dove into it. I was super excited, uh, looked at all the diff different detail types and was just shocked on how much was there. And, and we can kind of dive into that a little bit later. But one thing I did kind of realize or one thing I, a challenge I did face was how am I going to use this now? Uh, here's this really cool app. Here are all these different detail types, but um, I've, I've, I'm a person who's been blind for, for, you know, 28 years at that point. What I, I had a lot of uh, solutions already in place. So how can this help or how can this change what I'm currently been doing? And so that was kind of a, a little bit of a slower process for me was to identify different use cases. Um, and for me, it was starting out with um, a little bit more simple task, things that, that, that I need to identify on a daily basis. Um, those, every time I grab something and said to myself, what is this? I made myself then kind of create a way tag for it if it made sense. Rather than going and using the old solution I did, I kind of forced myself or retaught myself uh, to, to start to use way around. And, and once you sort of change your habit and you start to see the potential, uh, then you start to, to not have to force yourself to think how a tag can uh, benefit you. You just go right to it. Corey, I'm curious, do you remember what the very first way tag you created was? Um, it, 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 honestly, I do. And it's funny because it really had, uh, I just made up a, a food tag and, and didn't even have that food. It was a Nature Valley granola bars, I still remember. And I think I still use that for most times when I uh, do demos for people. I don't even think I owned uh, a box of Nature Valley granola bars. I was just kind of digging into the, into the uh, different detail types. But where some of the areas that I find it to be most beneficial are 
those for me it's those 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 things i need to identify that i don't identify on a daily basis so for example one of the things i've done a little bit more recently is in my home office i've i've uh, got a uh, a network switch and there's tw uh, there's a possibility of 24 different ports on there i don't have all 24 filled but rather than putting braille labels on each cable that's coming in or going to a computer and creating uh, a kind of a spreadsheet of what port one is, port two is, I've thrown a way tag, just a sticky, it's just a basic sticker way tag on there and have now kind of mapped out what, e what each of those ports are. Because for me, then it doesn't take me away from what I'm doing. Um, I'm, I'm standing in front of that network switch because I'm doing something I don't want to have to go and then move over to the computer and try to read it and then come back to what I'm doing. So that's that that's one of the reasons one of the use cases that I've done and what I like about it is again it doesn't take you away from what you're doing. Yeah, I really like that. And um, I've heard a lot of people say that, you know, cables or cords, if you have a bunch of different devices and which charger goes to which one, and like you said, the ports um, is a really great use for way around and something like, you know, Braille is a little bit long um, to be able to really label accurately. Um, and, you know, a lot of other types of solutions just don't have um, quite the same flexibility to say, you know, this cords should be kept in the kitchen or, you know, this one is for the office. Um, so I, I think that's great. I've also heard of people labeling their um, electrical boxes, you know, kind of the same thing and um, just which, which switch goes to which room. And I think that's another really great use yeah. for way around. And you don't, you know, uh, I'm, I'm personally, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a strong Braille reader. Uh, if you give me something and you give me enough time, I'll be able to, <laughs> to read it to you. But, you know, it, and I think Braille absolutely is, is, a, is a tried and true method for labeling things. There's no question about that. But, you know, when you need to change something, it does require more work than to change that Braille label. You have to remove the old one, create a new one, stick it back on, where way around, um, you've got that ability to quickly update that tag uh, and only update the information that you've changed versus change, you know, having to change everything. Yeah, that's great. Um, so I, we've talked about a couple of um, fairly, I guess, technical ways to use way around, but let's back up and go back to the Nature Valley granola bars. Um, we actually have a couple of boxes of Nature's Valley that we also use for demos. Um, but, you know, a, we get a lot of questions about using way around in the kitchen. And I'd love to start just by talking about, um, you know, some what's the difference between things like barcode scanners you know whether it's ai seeing ai another type of barcode scanner versus something like way around and where do you see um the strengths of each each type of system that, that's a great question um and i think they they definitely each have their own strengths and they have their own challenges um you know if we step if we look at some of the more common ways of identifying products you know outside of way around you've got your you know your uh envision america you know your id mate uh, system and this it's a great barcode scanner it uses a standard uh, uh, barcode uh, scanner rather than using a camera so having that multi-directional um, is very easy to and uh, quick to find your barcode uh, the database is great um, the uh, the extra information that it provides from the nutrition facts to the cooking facts, the ability to record your own voice to add on to that is all great. Some of the challenges are, and a, a really a big challenge for me is the price. You know, when you're talking well over a thousand dollars for a new uh, barcode scanner, that that's a that's a hefty price tag. And then again, it's another device that you need to carry along with you, another device you have to maintain. Um, and so I think those are some of the challenges. And PenFriend uh, is another great option. I think the PenFriend is really geared, in my opinion, really geared for individuals who need very, very basic identification. 
Um, the Penfriend allows you to just use an RFID tag, basically record your own voice, and anytime you then touch the tip of that pen on that tag, your voice will play back. Very easy to do, but there's a lot of, with that ease of use though, comes a lot of limitations. There's no built-in database. Uh, if you record yourself uh, and you only need information that's at the end of the recording, you've got to listen to the whole recording you know, to get to what you want. If you need to update any information, you're redoing the whole tag. Um, so I think those are some of the barriers there. When you look at some of the other cell phone options uh, like Seeing AI or Envision AI, when you start to use barcode scanning, then you're relying on the camera of your phone. And in my opinion, that is, is, a, is a definitely more difficult to do. Being able to line that barcode up perfectly with your uh, device camera so that it sees enough of that barcode to scan it in can be very difficult. Now, seeing AI and Envision AI do a great job of providing some, um, some assistance in that, the beeping with seeing AI, the faster it beeps, the more of the barcode you're seeing. But again, it's, it's that feeling around finding the barcode, which again, you know, those barcodes are not tactile in any shape or form. So it's, you know, just moving your camera around and around and around and around until you get it right. Way around using NFC tags is, a two, is in my opinion there, there's two benefits to that. Number one, there's a tactile, you know exactly where that way tag is. You know, even if you didn't put the way tag on that product, you're gonna be able to feel any of the tags you're putting on, even in the stickers. You're gonna be able to, so you're gonna get that tactile um, feedback so it's easy to find those tags. Second of all, using NFC, all you need to do is bring the back of your phone. Usually when I train individuals, I just have them touch the camera. Uh, first I feel, have them feel where the camera is on the back of their device and then just touch that to the way tag and that's going to trigger and read that nfc tag there's no lining up there's no um you know getting it just right uh just getting it close and touching it is going to get that nice quick easy read so in my opinion uh way around is definitely a there's two big benefits just right there with that tactile of the of feeling the tags and then using NFC versus the barcode. And then you've got all of the, um, all of the, the, the detail types that then make it, it really, in my opinion, that's really where way around shines. Again, way around can be as easy or as complex as you want to make it. And that's the same for creating a tag or reading a tag. When Jessica, when you launched the app, it was such a, it's such a clean, easy home screen right there on your, on your main screen. And I think that's a huge benefit right there. It makes that entry that, that uh, makes that barrier for entry so, so small because there's literally just two buttons you need to be, or that you need to deal with, read or write. And then when you create those tags, again, you can make them as simple as you want by just filling in that description field. If that's all you want to do, then creating that tag can be as simple as tapping right, filling in the description, and then tapping the right key, uh, the, the, uh, the right button and, 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 and be on your way. Now, if you want to make it more complex, and you want to add more detail because it's important to you and you have the skill level and the comfort to do it, that's where the detail types really shine then. And, and, and I think way around, I think you guys have done a really good job of creating um, some, some good uh, templates for those detail types so that individuals can choose uh, uh, clothing care or grocery item or cleaning and then be able to fill in some of those pertinent details and then even taking it one step farther, that ability then to create your own custom detail types and your own custom information even takes it uh, to that next level. So if any of those detail type templates that Way Around provides don't, doesn't fit the need because you've kind of thought out of the box and came up with this great way to use Way Around, no worries, you can just use those custom fields and really create the tag to your needs to, to, to make sure it really uh, fits exactly what you want. So again, that ability to make it as simple 
or as complex isn't an easy feat for an app to do. I'll be honest, most apps, uh, if they go very simple, then the, the, you're very limited on what you can do. If they make it very complex, then it's too difficult for individuals to use it. The, the cognitive load is too much. You get overwhelmed very easily, but way around it, you've done a great job of, of really walking that line of making it simple and complex at the same time. Great, thank you, Corey. And um, in a couple of weeks, we are going to talk a little bit more about our development process and some of our standards for keeping it complex because it, it, believe it or not, it takes a lot of work to keep it simple. Um, it's easy <laughs> to just throw more stuff in. Um, so definitely tune in in a couple of weeks. We're gonna be talking more about that simplicity, but um, you did mention just the flexibility and variety of people who use Way Around. And we have users, um, we're just starting to lose their vision who may be colorblind or have been diagnosed with macular D and they're, you know, they do have a lot of um, remaining usable vision, but way around helps them, you know, just be able to get some of that, you know, fine print information from boxes or, you know, picking out clothes, um, labeling patterns, that type of thing. So it's great if you, you know, if you do have some um, vision we have a lot of people who don't really have any remaining vision. So somebody said, I love being able to pick out my clothes completely in the dark. Um, and you can do that with way around. You don't need any light to focus the camera um, because you're not using the camera. I like what you said, Corey, with the iPhone, you can use the camera to know where to touch the way tag, but it is, it's just that touch and that's all you have to do. So it's really um, easy on your battery life and easy to find where to, to touch the tag. Um, and we we have some deafblind users as well who use a braille display. And um, one woman said this is the system that really has let her um, retain her independence and live alone. And um, she has hundreds and hundreds of items tagged. So it is, um, especially if you have a degenerative um, eye disease where you, you have a lot of vision now, but you know that may change over time. Way around isn't a system that it's only going to work until your vision gets to a certain stage. Way around is going to to be able to flex to your needs at any given time. So, um, I'd like to actually switch gears a little bit. We've talked a lot about the technology, but one of the questions we've been getting a lot recently is, what type of a tag do you use in which situation? So, um, Corey, I'd love to do a little pop. Sorry, I think, I think we might have gotten muted. Um, so we can do a little pop quiz and Corey, you may be muted. Okay, there you go. I think I'm, I think um, I'm better now. And I have several items in the kitchen that way around will work really well on. And I just want to see what kind of a way tag would you use on these items? This is like Jeopardy. No, <laughs> it is, but there's no right or wrong answer. Um, oh, even better. And Darwin may chime in as well if he has some other ideas. So, I hope um, he does. I don't want to be out on this island by myself. <laughs> so we'll start with um, salad dressing. What was that? Salad dressing. Salad dressing. All right. Well, so, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a keep it simple kind of person. Um, I think that if you're talking about a plastic uh, just a standard kind of plastic uh, bottle, then I would go with just the standard sticker. Now, one thing I usually tell people though, anytime you're using the standard, just the standard stickers, the non-metal standard stickers, think about, uh, think about after the, the, the product or the uh, uh, item is empty or done with. If we just stick a plain old sticker right on that dressing, that's great. But as soon as that dressing bottle is gone and done, you're kind of stuck with that uh, way tag stuck on there. So a lot of times when I work with clients and myself too, I, I, I will stick a way tag sticker on like a, like, like a file card and maybe just trim it down a little bit. And then I'll stick that file card onto the salad dressing bottle or the ketchup or whatever it might be. So that when it's over and if I'm replacing it, then I just need to remove that little file 
uh, the little cardboard that it sticks on and put that on the new bottle so I'm not wasting a tag each time. Great. I love that. Darwin, do you want to add anything? Yeah, that, that's a great idea. One of the things that, uh, that's not real obvious is uh, just being able to use removable labels to attach any tag uh, to any item. And so one of the things, I've got a, a salad dressing bottle right here that I used a, uh, uh, a, a plastic clip and I used the removable label on there and it holds it very closely. And so once the salad dressing is empty, I just remove that removable label and uh, put it on the next, next bottle. That can also work with a sticker. Just don't take the sticker off of the, the protective coating on the back. And so you just put a removable label on top of it. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And if you do put a removable label or something over the way tag, you'll still be able to read. Um, so you don't, don't worry about, you know, getting the sticker just on the, the removable sticker just on the edges. Um, okay, good. Let's go to, um, what about ice cream? Chocolate or vanilla? Oh, uh, that's a good question. Honestly, it, um, uh... It doesn't last long enough in our house to bother tagging it. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I, again, I think that I, I think that a standard sticker would be good. I think using a tag, uh, using a um, clip makes a lot of sense too, if if you can securely put it in there. Again, I think what it comes kind of down to is is what you feel is um, two two things. What what can you easily tactile identify? Uh, on there. And number two, even more important, what's going to stay on that when you throw it in the freezer? Uh, the last thing you want is a fridge or freezer with a bunch of tags or clips down at the bottom that have fallen off. So whatever you choose, make sure it's securely on there. Yes. And, um, you know, one of the tags that we often recommend for the freezer is the oval hole button. Mm -hmm. which I will go ahead and hold up. But the buttons, um, you can use them for a lot more than just clothes. This one's about the size of a quarter and it has a notch in the center. You can loop a rubber band. Um, for the freezer, we recommend silicone bands. You can get a food grade silicone band that you could stretch around the ice cream. You would loop it through the notch in the button and then you could stretch it around that carton. Um, so that, and the silicone won't snap even when it gets cold. Sometimes rubber will um, deteriorate over time. Great idea. There's also, just like Darwin had showed um, the removable label, you can get labels that are specifically made for the freezer if you wanted to use a weight clip and, and tape it on. And we're working on pulling together some of those resources of how do you attach um, way tags to items where you can easily reuse them. So we'll send that out. Um, soon probably in the next week or two but um there's lots of ways that you can make your make your tags have a, a very long life mm -hmm. and we actually um somebody chatted us a question um she says what about if you package meat into portions for your family that you need to distinguish um, once it's frozen what tag would you use for that that's a great question i think that you know you could do probably one of well, you could do multiple ways of doing it, but most of the time, if you're packaging it, you're either putting it in a freezer safe uh, Ziploc bag, or you're putting it into some kind of freezer safe, uh, you know, uh, container, Tupperware container or something like that. So in those cases, I think that you, you could almost kind of follow suit as we just talked about with ice cream. I think a standard label would be okay. Sticker, again, maybe on a file card, something like that. But I think what I, I liked, really liked your idea, Jessica, of using the, the, the oval um, button. You've got that nice bigger hole there to kind of feed through a silicone band. Or even if you're using a, a twist tie, if you've got uh, some bigger twist ties, that you've gotten laying around or even some smaller ones if you've uh, you know, saved them from your bread or from garbage bags or whatever, you could use those twist ties uh, to kind of uh, feed around and, and, and uh, secure it as well. The clip I think would also, if you're talking about a Ziploc bag, the clip would also probably be a good option. Yep, great. And okay, so we've done a couple of frozen items. What about bags of chips or pretzels? 
Um, I think the I, I think the clip will probably do a, a good job. I think the oval button again, uh, depending, it, you know, you could. Um, in our house, we have a couple uh, chip clips that we use around the house. So if you've got some chip clips already that are in uh, circulation, you could either stick a uh, a standard sticker right on the chip clip. Uh, now remember that chip clip, you know, that sticker will kind of stay on there, which wouldn't be a, a big deal. You would just need to kind of rewrite uh, that tag each time uh, that you change it over to a new bag or using the oval button uh, uh, and, and maybe connecting it via twist tie again or a rubber band to the chip clip um, would be another solution. Great. Um, yeah, I think several people have really, they've, we often get asked to make a chip clip um, with a weight tag, but there's so many different preferences for sizes and shapes. We, we do recommend stick a sticker right on the chip yeah. clip. If you, there's a lot of metal or if there's a magnet, use the square weight tag, which has a barrier that will protect it from the metal and make sure it can still read. But um, you can keep reusing that again and again. And the stickers are easy to wipe clean with a little bit of soap and water. I wouldn't recommend immersing them in water, but you can easily wipe them clean. Yeah, I think that that makes a lot of sense rather than than you kind of creating a, a single chip clip, letting uh, individuals find the clip that makes the most sense for them and then using your stickers to create it into their own way chip clip. <laughs> yep, exactly. So um, after this webinar, we're going to send everyone who's registered a guide called 50 Ways to Use Way Around in the Kitchen. And we're going to have just a lot of ideas of different tags that you could use on different items. Again, there's no right or wrong answer. A lot of it's personal preference, but this will get you started with some, some different ideas. Feel free to share the guide. Um, it's a PDF, so you can um, print it out, take it with you. Um, you can access it electronically and feel free to share it. So look for that in the next day or two. And we have just a couple of more minutes until I'm going to open it up for questions. But is there anything else you'd like to mention, Corey? Um, uh, oh, you know, I, one thing we didn't mention was the Waylink scanner, although maybe we did and I just wasn't paying attention. But for those individuals who may have a smartphone and you're either not sure if your phone has NFC, or you know for sure your phone does not have NFC, you're not, uh, you are not excluded from the way around fun, you can use the Way, uh, Waylink scanner, which is uh, a uh, Bluetooth, right, if I'm not mistaken? Yep. Uh, Bluetooth uh, portable uh, that, that basically adds NFC capability to your phone. And we won't poke fun that you have an old phone without NFC. <laughs> Although we have a lot of people who are, you know, have brand new phones and they love the Waylink because it lets you scan really quickly. Yeah. Um, it fits really nicely in the palm of your hand and especially, um, you know, for some people, the phones are really heavy. And so if you're scanning yeah. a bunch of things, um, the Waylink is, it's quite light. It's about the size of a credit card and a half an inch thick and it weighs almost nothing. So we have a couple of videos on our YouTube channel about the Waylink, um, but it's a great little device. Yeah. So good with that. Um, I have one question in the chat and then we'll open it up. If you have a question, you can um, raise your hand to do that on the Mac. It's option Y on the PC. It's alt Y and on your phone, it's star nine. Um, and then I do have a couple of questions in the chat that I'll go ahead and take. So the first one is, um, is the description to add on the labels typed or verbally added, which is a great question. Um, and Corey, do you want to take this one? Yeah, sure. Just let me know if I get it wrong. But the, the answer is both. Um, so if I'm not mistaken, Jessica, and correct me if I'm wrong, but as soon as you tap that right button to, to, or to, to, to create that tag, um, you're plopped right into your description field. And so at that point, you may either uh, use the on-screen uh, on touch keyboard if you want to type it out, or if you're a voiceover user, go ahead and use the um, dictation command, the two finger double tap. Anytime a keyboard is up on the screen on iOS, a two finger double tap will automatically activate the dictate button. You do not need to take your finger, 
find the dictate button. You can just do a two finger double tap, start your dictation, two finger double tap again, that'll stop dictation and you'll hear voiceover repeat back whatever you dictated into that description field. Two things that make that really awesome. Number one is obviously now we're using dictation, so we don't have to use the keyboard, so it's gonna be faster. The other reason I really like the two finger double tap for dictation is that it does not take focus away from where you are. So if you're in that description field and you reach down with one finger to find the dictate button and double tap it, now you've brought voiceover focus down to that dictate button rather than staying up in the description field where you want it to be. So using that two finger double tap method allows you to dictate, allows you to stop dictating, and then you can swipe right to move on to the next, uh, uh, the, the next uh, item on the screen. So it just makes navigating uh, a little bit more easy and a little more smooth. Great, and we're gonna talk more um, next week about how to use Way Around as the tool for learning some of those voiceover gestures. So um, definitely come back for that and we'll, we'll talk more about that, but that's a great tip, the two finger double tap. And we'll also do a little bit with TalkBack for all of our Android friends. Mm -hmm. um, so I have, there's a bunch of questions and a bunch of raised hands. So I am going to um, do, it's a five, three, one number. Let's see, you should be unmuted. Hello, yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Hi, I'm Jason Ian, and I'd like to know, are there any tags that you can use that, say if I record something on it, anybody in the, can use it? Like in other words, if I use a tag in public, like at YMCA, I put it on a door to describe what the door is, that any blind person can touch it and they can see what it is? Yeah, that's a great question, Jason. So. Um, Yes, um, we do have Way Around for Public Spaces. It's a paid service that usually the organization would want to participate in. So it's something you might want to talk to the YMCA about, and then they would have an administrator who could write information, and anyone who's a Way Around user would be able to read it. And we'll also be talking more about that next week. So um, great, great question and great preview of what's to come. So I'm gonna take um, one more um, from the phone and then I'm gonna go back to some of the chat questions. All right, it's an 801 number. Go right ahead. Hello, um, yes, I teach Woodshop at the Center for the Blind here in Salt Lake City. And we do a lot of uh, different projects with, with all sorts of different species of woods. And I was wondering, do you have a label or something that you think would be good for identifying wood species that would, you know, stick to the wood or? Yeah, Darwin, do you want to take this one? Yeah, I, I would just use a white tag sticker. Uh, the stickers are, uh, you know, they are very sticky and so they would stick onto the wood, uh, you know, and if it gets to the point that you've used that wood and you're wanting to take it off, you can remove it. Uh, the thing, the thing about the stickers is, you know, like I said, they're very sticky. Uh, when you remove it, there's a great likelihood that you will destroy that tag. Uh, you know, it may not be reusable. If you're really careful, you might be able to, uh, but the antenna inside of it is you know, pretty fragile. And so when you're removing it, uh, it wouldn't work. But I would, I would use a sticker uh, just because uh, you're going to keep it on that wood. It just got to go with that piece of wood wherever it goes. You know, another oh. thought, um, you know, if you have shelves or bins that you keep s certain species of wood um, just to organize them, you could actually label the shelf, um, you know, or that bin, so then you would know um, what the organization system is. Right, yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking. And also, like Jason's question, if I have multiple students, but I record, say, a certain can of finish with a, with a tag, I would be, be on my phone the only one that would be able to identify it. Another student couldn't come up with their phone and, and identify that tag because they didn't make that's, the recording. Is that true? Yes, that's, yes, that's how um, Way Around for Home and Office, the free app, um, it's account based. So whatever account writes the tag, that account is going to be able to read the tag. You can be logged into the same account with multiple devices, but in a school setting or 
um, more of a public setting, we'd love to talk with you about um, way around for public spaces and that would give you the opportunity to be able to write tags that all of your students or other, you know, teachers, other um, staff members would also be able to read. And then you would have, you would be the only one who could edit those or if you designated another administrator. Okay, Just but if you had a, a spouse in your house that was blind as well, for home use, it could be on, on two different phones or so, yes. so you wouldn't have to, you know, identify the same thing twice on yes, each phone. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Thank Good. you. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Good questions. Jessica, right, let me, let me, let me ahead, jump Darwin. in on this question. Uh, one other option for your shop there is you might want to create an account for the shop. You know, just create a, uh, uh, an email address for that shop only and put all the tags on that shop. And then the people that are in your shop, they could log into that account. Now they would be able to read it and edit it and change it, delete it, whatever. Uh, so you're gonna have to understand that, you know, that they would be able to edit it because they would have full access to it. But they could come into your shop and just log into that shop account uh, with their own device and they would all be able to read that tag. Great, good suggestion. So um, there's a, a recommendation from someone in the chat and she says in the freezer, you don't want to use a paper index card because they can deteriorate. Um, and so she recommends cutting out a plastic lid of, you know, a margarine or sour cream tub, and then you can punch a hole and, and stick the weight tag on that. So that's a really creative suggestion. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, great solution. Um, so another question we have is, um, does Way Around read the labels if voiceover is off? And I'll go ahead and take that one. So it, Way Around will display the information according to whatever settings you have on your smartphone. So if you're not a voiceover user, you're not going to hear it audibly, um, but it will display the, the written text on the phone. And if you have larger font, it's going to display according to your preferences. But if you want the audio experience, you do need to have voiceover or talkback turned on. Um, okay, let's take another question from, um, it's a 435 number. Hi oh. there. Hello, this is Cynthia. I have a question. If when it saves this in iCloud, is it my iCloud? So that's a great question. It's actually not the iCloud, it's the WayCloud. Um, and that is our cloud-based backup system. So the, the data is both on your phone and it's backed up to the cloud and that's what lets you be able to access it from multiple devices. But it's not touching your iCloud. It, if you're an Android user, it's not touching Google Cloud. Um, it's our, it, it's, we call it the Wake Cloud. And we just um, had a new release last Friday and there's now an icon up in the header that it says Way Cloud Connected, and that's how you know the sync is working properly. So it's, we haven't changed anything about the function. We're just letting you know that it's working. So good question. And I have another question from the chat. Can you fold the, um, the sticker over and have it read or scan correctly? So Darwin, do you want yeah. to do yeah, that? Um, no, you, you would not want to do that. Um, the way that the, the tags work, uh, there's an antenna in it. It's a very fine antenna, just a very thin strip of metal that goes around and round and round uh, that, that uh, particular uh, that, that sticker or tag, whatever it is. And when you fold it, you could damage that antenna. You might even break it. Uh, I know that there's, uh, there's some other systems that you can cut a tag in half and still be able to use it. Uh, with these tags, if you did that, you would destroy the tag uh, because these tags actually have a chip in them with memory uh, and an antenna, and that antenna is how it gets the power. So if you fold it, uh, there's a great likelihood that you would destroy it. Good question. And let's see, there's a 915 number with your hand up. You are unmuted. Go ahead. Yes, I have another suggestion for the freezer or if you put your tags, you need to put them in something that's liquid. You know, you have leftovers like soup mm -hmm. and you want to tag it and put it in the freezer. You could put those in those like snack, you could put your weight tag, like you said, put them on an index card, the, the adhesive ones. 
and put put that that index card with the tag on it in one of those like snack sandwich bags or those smaller craft bags that open up at the top, you could slide that tag in there. That way it doesn't get all full of whatever you're putting it in, like your Tupperware container from your leftover casserole that's going into the freezer. You could mm -hmm. just set it on the top and that way when you got when you took it out, you could have the tag be red and then just take it out of that little plastic bag and throw the bag away and your tag is still clean. That's a great suggestion. Love that system. <laughs> Yeah, let me mm -hmm. let me speak. There's one other thing about that. Uh, one of the things that uh, about the way around our tags work with radio waves. Uh, so you do not have to be able to see the tag. And if, so if that tag is inside of some sort of container, and it's fairly close to the surface, you very likely would be able to scan that tag, even though it's inside of the container, it does not have to be on the outside. Uh, you, you do not have to be able to see it like a UPC code or QR code. Great. So um, let's see, there's another um, question in the chat. Um, PH says, um, these tags cannot go through the washer or dryer. And it depends which type of tag we're talking about. So our two, we have two types of buttons. I showed you earlier the oval hole button and we also have a two hole button. I'll hold it up if you're using the camera at all. Um, and it, this is the type of button that you would sew into a garment. It has two little holes um, and it's about the size of a nickel. These two buttons are completely waterproof. It's the highest waterproof rating. They are heat proof up to 250 degrees Fahrenheit and they're cold proof down to negative 40 degrees. So they, they're very versatile. Um, they are the ones people, if you put them on your clothes, you can send them through the washer, the dryer, they can go to the dry cleaner and you don't have to remove the button. Any of the other way tags, you can wipe them clean with a little bit of soap and water, or even if you're using them in the shower and they're not you know, directly getting hit with water, um, that should be fine. A little bit of water won't hurt them, but you wouldn't want to put, say, a, a sticker through the washer and dryer. Also, anything that might be going through the dishwasher, um, we do have people who get some of the buttons and they'll use Gorilla Glue or Super Glue and attach it to various items, measuring cups, things like that, um, to be able to label them and they can go through the dishwasher. So the other thing question. on the dishwasher, Jessica, is back to uh, purchasing labels. There are waterproof labels and there are dishwasher proof labels. So you can put those uh, labels, if you put a sticker on something that you're gonna put in the dishwasher, uh, you could get one of those uh, dishwasher proof labels and stick it on top of it. You might want to get one that's a little bit bigger. Uh, our circles are about an inch in diameter, so you might want to get something like an inch and a half diameter uh, to put on top of that uh, circle, uh, and that would protect it. Great, and we'll include that when we do the roundup of all the different accessories you can use with Way Around. Um, so let's see, there's, I'm going to take questions from people who haven't asked yet. So. Um, Milton, go right ahead. You may need to unmute yourself, Milton. Let's see. Um, okay, I'm here. Um, okay. I have a question. Can you use like a duct tape or scotch tape to tape down a weight tag yes. and not interfere with the antenna? Yes. yes. Yeah, oh, great. I, yeah, any sort of tape or label, um, it's, not, it's not going to interfere. Um, the only thing you wouldn't want to do is put something metal. So don't put pin foil across your way tag. Um, but any type of you know, adhesive, it should be just fine. And people also ask, you know, what if you have a phone case? And that's also fine. Even the otter boxes, they're very popular and they work with way around. So is, is the phone needs to be really, really close to the way tag, but if there's a little bit in between the phone and the way tag, that's okay. Great. Thank hey, thank you. Yeah. Okay, and um, let's see, I'm gonna take one last question from um, Mary Lee. Go right ahead. You may need to unmute yourself, Mary Lee. That is. Got it. Okay. 
um, I'm back with the same question I, I um, sent to you, I don't know, a couple months ago, and that's in regard to uh, somehow being able to identify which level of water and temperature my washing machine is set on. Currently, I have a button that I can push and it moves, say if we're talking temperature, um, the top one is, um, you know, hot, medium, cold, and it's identified with a light. I can see the light now, but I won't be able to as my vision decreases. And there's no difference in the sound of the, the machine. It beeps when I change it, but it doesn't indicate which one it's on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I do remember you emailing about that and <laughs> way around would be great to tell you, you know, the order of, you know, the different settings. But, yeah. you know, there are some machines that have an audio cue, like if you do normal, it'll do a double ding. It sounds like your machine doesn't work that way. And mm -hmm. I, I don't know, there may be some solutions where you could retrofit your machine and talking with um, you know, a, a trainer, you know, even someone like Corey may have some suggestions. Um, if you do have a machine that has some sort of an audio cue, um, my washing machine has a rotary dial that sounds fairly similar with some lights. Um, mm -hmm. And again, normal has the double ding. So I've put a way tag there. And I said, you know, normal is the double ding and then going clockwise, here's all the settings. So you know, if you end up, yeah. you know, purchasing a new washing machine, you may want to look into some of those audio settings because there are machines out there that you wouldn't have to retrofit anything and would give you a little bit more um, information. Hmm. Okay. Well, I just purchased this last year, so I won't oh. be purchasing <laughs> anything yeah. anytime soon. And um, thank you. I'll keep, I'll keep working on it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So we have about three Five, minutes zero, left. Three. Um, and I am just going to wrap up. I know there's a few um, other questions. If I didn't get to your question, please send me an email, connect at wayaround.com. That will land right in my inbox. A few people have asked, where can you purchase Way Around? And you can purchase on wayaround.com. We have a few different starter packs. We have a kitchen starter pack. Um, we have, we call it the, the regular starter pack which gives you 60 way tags, and you'll get a variety of all of the different types of way tags, five to 10 of each. And that really lets you try out, you know, which way tag do you prefer for different scenarios? And then you can order any individual way tag in a pack of 25. Vision, excuse me, Vision Forward, Corey's organization is also a distributor of Way Around. So if you are near Milwaukee, definitely get in touch with them. And um, I would be happy to talk with you if you have a question about what type of weight tag you should use for a particular item, definitely get in touch with us and also be on the lookout for the PDF I mentioned, 50 ways to use way around in the kitchen. And Corey, I want to thank you so much for being on our webinar today. It was really fun to talk with you and have you um, on our webinar. I, I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, thank you guys for <clears throat> both having me here, but also thank me, thank you for continuing to develop a way around and uh, having options for, for people to make their life easier. Uh, if you don't mind, can I, I, I if, if uh, you mentioned early on uh, that um, <clears throat> Vision Forward, we do have a YouTube channel. We do release videos every week. Uh, if you're interested, they're all around different technology. It's at youtube.com slash in focus technology. Check us out. Great. Thank you. And we'll include the link to your YouTube channel whenever we send up our wrap up email. Awesome. So Thanks, guys. we hope to see you back next week. We'll have some other um, special speakers that I mentioned. We're going to talk about using way around with voiceover and talk back and how to use way around to increase some of those skills. Um, we'll also be talking more about Way Around for public spaces. <laughs> um, so definitely come back next week, um, same time, 1 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday. Invite your colleagues, friends, um, and if there are other topics that you'd really like for us to cover, um, email me and let me know. We want to make this really useful for you. So thanks for attending. It's right at 2 o'clock, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>